Alrighty, so we are live. I apologize. I uh, had a little technical problem with the uh, chat uh, live stream that I had uh, scheduled for 1130. Uh, so I had to start a new one. <laughs> so I'm sure people will be populating in here uh, any moment. So I apologize uh, for that, for those of you that were waiting. I had to start a new live stream. For some reason, I've been having some technical issues with um, the scheduled live streams. And, uh, uh, first of all, before we get, uh, started, uh, let me just say, uh, I appreciate everyone showing up tonight. Uh, it's a very short notice. Uh, I'm aware of that, uh, only about a half an hour or so, but, uh, had some information I needed to get out there and, uh, some news and a uh, live stream is just the quickest and easiest way to do that. Um, and we'll start off with the uh, two topics that I have for today. In just a moment, we'll wait for people to uh, to populate in. How's it going? People are starting to load into the chat. Welcome, welcome. Um, today, I'm going to talk about two things. First off is Tack Pack for June. And we're going to talk about uh, the uh, some of the spoilers for June and as well as some information. There's only a few days left to get on board for June Tack Pack. So we're going to talk about that. Um, also some promo code news. We have a change to the promo code. And then also we're going to share some channel news uh, coming up after that. So I uh, got some pretty cool stuff going on for June, both with the channel and also with Tack Pack. So that'll be really awesome. Uh, first off, let's, uh, let's get on board with Tack Pack here. Let me bring this up real quick. There we go. Uh, so June Tack Pack, uh, we have about $115 value coming out for June. It's a big Tack Pack for June. And uh, for those of you who aren't on board yet or uh, used to be members and want to uh, get back on board for a great box, June is going to be a great month for that. And uh, like I said, $115 value. Uh, we have uh, a knife coming this month for uh, June Tack Pack. So that's good. We haven't seen uh, a knife in the box for a couple couple months, I think. It's been a little while since we've had a, a knife in the box. And that's good. Because, I mean, it's always nice to get a knife. But uh, we've been really uh, concentrating on some really cool gun gear over the last few months, a number of months now, which is really, really great and always popular. So uh, I th that's always a good thing. Uh, but we're uh, taking up some room with some knives this month. So that's going to be, or next month, I should say. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it is promised to be your new favorite EDC knife. Um, I've seen some spoiler pics of it, and it looks like a great knife. So if uh, you guys want to get in on a uh, great knife for June, um, $49.95 per month plus shipping is tech pack cost. And uh, it's hassle-free. You can cancel at any time. Maze Tack Pack was good. I agree. I thought Maze Tack Pack was kind of flew under the radar. <laughs> um, it was uh, a lot of promo went into it. A lot of cool, cool uh, uh, stuff was in that box. And uh, I thought we got a lot of bang for our buck for May. So April and May were kind of a tandem boxes. Uh, they were kind of promo together uh, as really representing the best of what uh, Tack Pack does. And I thought... Um, April was good. May was great together. They were awesome. So, uh, what was in May's box in a nutshell? Oh, gee, dude, put me on the spot. Uh, we had the tumbler, uh, the steel target, uh, the trigger guard, the enhanced trigger guard. Uh, was the ambi switch? Nope. The ambi switch was April. Um, Jeez, what else was in that? Oh, crap. I'm totally blanking. I should know this stuff, you know? <laughs> uh, oh, man, now, now I'm blanking on it. Uh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, the sights. Thank you, Benz. Yeah, the, the, the sights. Um, that was probably the best part of the box for me. Uh, and then we had the, um, uh, oh, we had the adjustable grip, the 2.0. That's really cool grip. Um, I've been using the first generation of that grip that I got in Tack Pack a number of months ago. Actually, it's probably a year ago now. Uh, really great. I like that grip a lot. And the new one basically is the same concept, but it just has a lot more 
tactile uh, stippling and a, a lot more aggressive as far as the uh, the texture goes. And that's really the biggest difference between the two uh, that I've noticed anyway. Uh, and then we got the, uh, uh, oh, yep, we got the patch. Yeah, we got the free patch. Those are always fun. So I like this one. It was like a subdued gray and black patch. Excuse me, I just got off work, so I have to hydrate. Uh, <laughs> So uh, again, uh, thank you all for showing up to the chat. I really appreciate uh, you all uh, coming by for the live stream. Um, really short notice, and uh, I, I promise that I'll, I'll start doing, uh, you know, a little bit more notice on some future live streams. But it's been a crazy couple of months here, and uh, I'll get into that after we talk about TAC Pack. Uh, excuse the mess behind me. That will be explained. <laughs> um, there's a reason why all this stuff is everywhere around here. So I don't normally live in this kind of a pigsty, but uh, we got some uh, some big things happening around here. So uh, we'll talk about that uh, when we talk about the, uh, the channel news. So that will be fun. Um, so again, yeah, there's only a couple of days left for um, to get in on June TAC Pack. Uh, it closes at the end of the month. Uh, there's only a few slots left. June has already promised to be a, a big pack and a lot of cool stuff and people are jumping on board early this month and uh if you want to get in on june's tack pack man bet you gotta get get on it because uh i've already been told by tack pack that there's only a few slots left uh and it's uh it's, it's very close to selling out so there is a finite amount of them <laughs> so <laughs> they don't just grow on trees um so they're almost there and uh, so we want to make sure that uh, anybody who wants to get on has the info that they need. Uh, check them out over at TACPAC.com. Uh, use the promo code Dynamic Prepper Pack. And uh, stuck on the wait page. Yeah, I was just going over that. I've been having some technical difficulties with the uh, the live stream and uh, scheduling it, and then it doesn't uh, it doesn't push to the live stream. So then I have to like restart the whole thing. Uh, happened to me the last time I did a live stream too. Um, and of course I don't have time to dig around and figure out what I did wrong. Uh, so it worked just fine in the past, but, uh, um, for some reason, the last two that I've done, that feature has not worked really well. So, uh, we'll, we'll figure that out for the next live stream. Definitely. So anybody who is, uh, you know, stuck in the wait page, <laughs> on the original live stream, apologize for that. Um, I'll have to go in and delete it later. Uh, where were we? Um, yeah, so uh, let's get into some June spoilers. So the big thing that they've uh, been alluding to is the fire theme. And a lot of people early on uh, had the uh, the notion that this was going to be gun related. And uh, I don't think it's going to be gun related. Uh, they're promoting it as fire EDC gear. So I think we're actually going to be talking about real fire <laughs> and uh, definitely for some EDC purposes. So we're going to see some gear, EDC gear for uh, my guess is going to be fire making. So we're getting into a little bit more of the survival side of tack back with this one. Been real heavy on the tactical stuff, the AR-15 gear. And, uh, uh, and that, that's always super popular, but uh, we're going to get into some EDC gear. And I think that's really the strong point of TAC Pack. That's one of the reasons why I really like them is they really do come around and give some great EDC stuff uh, in that box. We've been kind of AR-15 heavy for the last few months, and it's nice to kind of branch out and uh, get some EDC gear, get a great knife. That was the other thing. Um, like I said, I got uh, some uh, early spoiler picks of the knife, and it is... It's going to be awesome. You, if you guys are looking for a good knife, this is going to be it. Uh, it's forty-five. Excuse me, forty-nine ninety-five per month plus shipping is the cost of the box. The value is one hundred fifteen, as I said before. And then we're going to round out the box with some American-made uh, parts and uh, goodies as well. Um, so for those of you who uh, love the gun gear and want to keep getting it, um, we're going to get some of that too. So I think it's going to be a really nice, well-rounded box for June. And again, only a few spots left. Uh, so if you want to get on board with TAC Pack, you have until the end of this month to do it. Uh, so uh, the uh, registration ends on June 1st. So you got to get on board by then. Only a few short days left. Um, the other big news, is it a full tang knife? No, it is going to be an EDC folder. So an EDC folder. 
I hope is not serrated. <laughs> I kind of share your view there. I'm not a huge fan of serrated knives myself. Um, but uh, it's one of those love hate relationship things. Some people love them, some people don't. It's kind of a personal preference, but I get you. I hear you. Absolutely. Um, the other big news is we are changing the uh, free item that we are giving away with the promo code. I did announce this on the channel via the uh, community chat uh, and also on the uh, uh, social media stuff. Did I? I think I did. And uh, so I just wanted to make that uh, very clear as we're going into June. Uh, we are uh, switching our uh, free promo item. So for the last few months, probably six months or so, we've been doing the SOG Gambit. A karambit style knife that's been the free item that uh, you get uh, if you use the promo code dynamic prepper pack when you purchase a new subscription with tech pack it comes uh, with your first month and uh, we're going to be switching that to the sog reactor multi-tool so that's what we're going to be doing from this point forward sorry i just totally whited out the camera there uh, so this is it right there this should look familiar for those of you who have been members of tack pack this was in the december box so it's a nice small little edc multi-tool so this is the item that will be given away free if you use the promo code dynamic prepper pack and it's not serrated <laughs> use the promo code dynamic prepper pack and you will receive the sog reactor multi-tool i love the little drive too it's got a Phillips and straight, excuse me, Phillips and flathead screwdriver bit there. You just turn it around for flat, just like that. There we go. And then it just stows right there. Nice and nifty. It's not a, um, you know, it's not one of these multi tools that's got like a ton of stuff on it. Um, it really just kind of has the bare essentials has a, um, a wire cutter, obviously your pliers there, along with the drive tool and also the EDC knife. That is a liner lock knife, just like any good EDC folder. And that's what we're gonna be giving away. So if you use the promo code dynamic prepper pack, that's what you're gonna get. Um, I'm really excited that we're doing the SOG multi-tool. That's pretty cool. We've been on the folding EDC knives for a while and then also on the fixed blade gambit. I think we've been doing uh, dedicated to knives on that for about two years, two and a half years. Um, the uh, it's been a while that we've been doing the knives. So, and we've done a lot of other things too, as far as um, you know, the uh, uh, we did the hex mag, thirty round AR fifteen mag for a while. We did operator hat. We did a small mini multi tool for a while. So we've have a track record of doing different things besides knives on the promo code because we've been doing the promo code for about four and a half years now. So we've been giving away a lot of product. We've given away a lot of free stuff over the years, uh, thanks to Tack Pack. And uh, so we've been doing pocket knives for a while. So it's kind of nice to branch out a little bit and offer something a little bit different. Uh, but for those of you that like the pocket knives, it still has one. <laughs> so uh, it's a very, e very EDCable uh, multi-tool. If you're looking for a minimalist multi-tool that, um, that really just has the bare essentials and what you need, very comfortable pocket carry, not something that you have to have, you know, like a carrier on your belt and all this kind of stuff. You can just you know stick it in your pocket. It uh, has a clip that you can do that with. And uh Really, really great EDCable knife. If you're not in the habit of carrying a multi-tool, um, this is going to fit right in. This is going to feel uh, right in line with you know any other kind of EDC knife that you would carry. So it's a good product. Uh, again, use promo code Dynamic Prepper Pack with any new subscription to Tack Pack, and uh, you will receive that absolutely free. Um, and uh, we're already going forward with that. We ran out of the SOG Gambits. It was such a popular item. So many people were jumping on board for the last few months with all the April and May uh, uh, hype that was going on that uh, we we ran out of the SOG Gambits. Great knife. I loved it. Thought it was one of the best items we've done so far for a uh, free giveaway. Uh, but alas, all good things must come to an end. So we've run out. There are no more. Um, so we had to move on to our next item. It does happen.
So uh, happened last year about this time too, when we were doing the 511 Alpha Tactical EDC folder. Um, June was such a huge month that we blew through like three months worth of what we had set aside in literally one month. So it was uh, it was uh, very, very popular. Um, so uh, Dynamic Prepper Pack, we'll get you that absolutely free. I should say too that the, uh, the uh, free promo item does not come in your box when you sign up for uh, uh, TAC Pack using the promo code. Uh, you'll get your TAC Pack normally. Um, so if you sign up by June 1st, you'll get June's TAC Pack normally. It comes out, I think, normally on about the 18th, 19th of the month, right in the middle of the month there. You'll get your TAC Pack just like everybody else does. And then about a week later, you'll get the promo item. So they they they, they uh, do those separately. Uh, so everybody gets their boxes, they get through that, and then they go ahead and process all the promo code items. Um, so they follow about a week later, give or take a few days. So don't fret when you open up your box and your promo code item isn't in it. So it will it will be there, don't worry. Uh, very good track record. Tech Pack is uh, very proactive about those and keeps them, uh, keeps them rolling pretty good, so. Um, some people I think have already started receiving the um, multi-tool in May. I think they ran out sometime in May with those, uh, with the gambits. So some people have actually already started receiving the multi-tools. So that's pretty cool. So that's everything for June Tack Pack. Uh, we got a knife, we got some EDC fire gear, uh, and some American made AR-15 gun parts, tactical parts for us. Um, really nice, well-rounded box. I'm really excited for June. Hope you guys are too. Again, jump on board. If you uh, haven't uh, had an opportunity to check out Tack Pack, go ahead and check them out. It's hassle free. You can cancel at any time. And uh, if you've uh, been a member of Tack Pack in the past, but for whatever reason you took a break, um, this would be a great month to jump back on board and uh, take advantage of a huge value, uh, $115 for 50 bucks. So can't, can't go wrong there. Uh, so moving on to, that's basically everything with Tack Pack. Uh, moving on to channel news. Got to take a drink here again. Sorry. <clears throat> the uh, big news for, well, it did take the month of April off of the channel. I didn't do any videos in April. Um, and the reason why is because my wife and I have been house hunting for the last few months. And uh, for those of you that follow the channel know that my wife and I moved up here to Minnesota. Uh, I moved up here in late January. My wife followed in mid-February. And anything good in that cup? No, it's just water. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm not an exciting person. Um, but, uh, uh, but I did take April off of making videos and uh, just because we're so busy with work and, and spending all of our you know, free time and weekends and evenings and stuff like that, uh, looking at houses and, uh, um, getting out there for those of you that may not know the, uh, the housing market up here is crazy. It's nuts. Um, we have the exact opposite problem of most kind of big cities that it's a very fast growing area. Um, in general, most of Minnesota is, uh, especially around the Twin Cities area. And uh, we, uh, we've heard some horror stories of people looking for houses. People have been on the market for a year or more, have put offers in on dozens of houses, get turned down every time. Um, the demand for housing is really, really high. It is a seller's market, absolutely, is really, really high. Um, the inventory on the market is very, very low. Prices are through the roof up here. There's almost no affordable housing up here. It's really hard. Um, medium house value up here is is way above national average. Um, it's tough to buy a house up here, especially one that's affordable. And uh, um, and it's getting it's just getting worse. And it's because it's just such a huge, fast growing area. It's really easy to find a great job up here not easy to find a place to live up here. Um, where I am right now, uh, we've been living here for the last few months and um, it is uh, uh, just, 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 just a townhouse we live in right now. 
uh, that we've been living in for the last few months. As we've uh, been uh, looking for a house on March, we came out of the housing market and within about two months, we were able to get an accepted offer on a house. Uh, we really lucked out. We got a really good deal. Um, there are deals to be had, but you got to be vigilant and you got to be, it's a wild west up here. Um, and you, you know, you got to be, you got to strike while the iron's hot and you got to know how to play the game. And uh, we didn't play the game for about the first month. <laughs> we were making offers and just getting shot down everywhere. Uh, we weren't really playing the game right. Uh, so we kind of refocused our efforts and started playing the right game. And, and very quickly, we were able to get an accepted offer. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that we were lucky to find a seller uh, who was uh, interested in selling the house to people that would really take good care of it and appreciate it. And, and they were as much concerned with, um, you know, selling to good buyers as they were to, um, to, uh, you know, to make money. Um, some people are just interested in making money. We were not the highest offer on the house. I think we were like third. Um, but we wound up beating out the other two higher offers because, um, you know, we really wanted the house and we had a seller that was sympathetic to selling the house to people that were uh, really interested in loving the house and taking care of it, just like they had for 45 years. They lived there for 45 years um, and uh, we're, we're finally selling the house. They had grown up there, raised their families there. Uh, they were very attached to it and wanted to see it go to people who would uh, appreciate it as much as they did. And, and we obviously were um, successful in convincing them that we were those people. Um, Absolutely. Money isn't everything. Uh, it is a seller's market up here, but uh, you know, the, the one thing with that is people have the ability to sell kind of who they want to. <laughs> so, um, and uh, you know, is, prices are a little high up here, but uh, you know, I think we were able to get a really good deal. Um, the house is, it's in need of some updates because they've lived there for 45 years and they didn't, it took really good care of the house, but it didn't exactly, you know, do a lot of uh, sort of, you know, it, it needs, it needs new carpets, coat of paint, you know, needs some stuff done to it. it needs to be brought up into the 21st century. They really haven't done a lot of the aesthetic updates to the house in the last few decades. Um, so it's a little dated. Um, so we were able to get um, some, able to get a pretty good deal on it. So we can get in there, do some updates to it. It's going to be a nice investment for us. So um how do you play the game right? It's mad. It depends on what market you're in. Um, and a lot of that has to do with, uh, um, you know, your, 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 your buyer's agent, your realtor. And, uh, especially if you're in an area where like we are, where we don't live, we, we, we don't, we've never been here before. You know, we're not from here. We don't know the market back where we used to be. We know that market, you know, we can go out and get a house like that because we understand the market, but it all has to do with the market. And we were kind of taking how things worked where we came from and applying them here. And it's just a different market. So we weren't playing the same game as everybody else was. Um, and you know, it just depends on what kind of market you're in. So, um, it's becoming very customary around the country to, um, to, uh, uh, not only to make your offer, but also to include a, a letter with your offer, much like a cover letter to a resume. We explain who you are, you know, how, what you like about the house. Um, and it just kind of kill them with kindness sort of thing. And uh, we found out that by including those letters with our offers, we very quickly were being considered, um, for houses that in the past we hadn't been, we off, we, we put offers in at about six houses before we got the accepted offer. And I'm a firm believer that, you know, going that extra step, including that letter, you know, talking to the, um, the seller that way, um, creating that relationship, putting, uh, you know, a, a real family behind an offer that they know that they can relate to. That really was what, allowed us to get the house. Absolutely. So, um, again, it's not all about the money. Some people just want to feel good at the end of the day. So, um, and, and you know, back where I came from, nobody puts a letter in with an offer. Nobody gives a shit, <laughs> you know, like here we are. <laughs> so, but up here, um, people do because, you know, they'll probably be considering five, six, seven different offers. You know, you gotta be able to stand out 
you know? So from Erie PA, I used to live outside of Erie. I actually went to high school in uh, just outside of Erie. We lived in Fairview, um, just uh, east of Erie. So I went to Fairview High School, class of 95, Fairview Tigers. Uh, and, you know, it's funny because it, it's funny that you bring up Erie because uh, something that when I went to Fairview High School uh, in Fairview, Pennsylvania, um, the town right next to us was Gerard, Gerard, Pennsylvania. And Gerard and Fairview were like big time rivals. And the funny thing is that our new house is on Gerard Avenue. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just great. So, but yeah, uh, love, uh, love Erie. So we've been back a number of times. I always like going back there. It's a great town. Got a lot of friends and family out there in Erie and Pennsylvania in general. Um, my uh, sister went to, uh, Allegheny college in Meadville, Pennsylvania. So, um, when I, uh, got out of college, I worked for the national park service as a park ranger. And, uh, I worked at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania for, uh, for a while. So I worked in Pennsylvania for a while too. So I love Pennsylvania. It's a great state. And uh, unfortunately, the uh, winds of life brought us back to the Midwest where we're from, uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota. So it really is our home. But uh, I've always thought of Pennsylvania as my second home. So I really like it. Yeah. Go out to Dobbins Landing. <laughs> yeah. Presque Isle. Home of the potholes. Dude, you should come to Minnesota. I will show you some freaking potholes. It's crazy up here. Nuts. Um, especially with the polar vortex we keep getting every winter, man. It just wrecks the roads. Um, so, yeah. So, the new house. Uh, so, we have the accepted offer. We're going through um, some, uh, you know, the the appraisals and the, you know, getting everything all set. Uh, we're set to close on the seventh. I believe we are closing. So just a couple of weeks, week, week away, week and a half away. Uh, we'll close. Uh, we'll do our final move in late June. So, um, so that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> I am not uh, predicting too much, uh, in the way of disruption to the channel. However, um, it's obviously going to be a little bit of uh, a little touch and go for a while, excuse me, while we get into the new house, move in. Uh, we, we don't have all of our stuff here yet. We got about a half, three quarters of it up here. Excuse me. Um, now my water is making me burp. Um, this is a disgusting. Uh, so, uh, we're going to be, um, um, having to go back to Wisconsin to button up a few loose ends, um, bring up the rest of our stuff and, uh, do our final, final move in, uh, probably the, the, uh, latter part of June. I do have a man cave, so, um, it's, it's going to have to be outfitted right now. It's a very, very ugly room. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, um, uh, pretty big space that I'm going to have much bigger than I had in the last couple houses. And, um, but it's going to need to be redone. So uh, definitely some fodder for some videos as we outfit a, a whole new man cave for the channel. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, we're going to have a dedicated space in the house uh, to be able to do uh, videos and, and uh, hang out and do live chats and, and uh, for me to be able to work. And so that's the big news. Um, it's going to be really cool as we're moving on into uh, the middle and end of um, 2019 we'll have uh, a really cool space for the channel. And, uh, and I definitely think we're going to have uh, a lot more videos coming out, a lot more content, still catching up on some things too, because I did take April off. Um, so I caught up on tech pack, caught up on battle box. I still need to catch up on survival boxes and uh, monthly knife club. So those are going to be coming out over the next couple of days. And uh, then we also have some, products that I need to review, including Travex. Got two wallets from Travex that I need to complete reviews on. So that will be out um, hopefully um, within the next few weeks or month or so. Um, so uh, we do have a promo code with Travex too. Uh, Dynamic is the promo code. 10% uh, off anything on Travex website. If you're interested in some wallets, you can use that. We'll be doing some reviews. I got a couple of wallets and some EDC gear from Travex that we'll be reviewing. So 
It'd be really cool. I love the wallets. I've been using them for about a month now. And they are some great wallets. So I've been using Travex wallets for years, probably five, six years now. So um, know them well. So if you haven't checked them out yet, definitely want to do that, Travex.com. Um, but yeah, we got a, a nice space um, that we'll be outfitting. Uh, new benches, get all my tools up there. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, get the computers and everything set up in there and the cameras and everything. That's why everything is a big freaking mess behind me because we've been packing and moving stuff around and getting stuff ready. So we've already kind of started the process of moving out of here into, uh, into the house. So that's why everything is trashed <laughs> behind me in this room. So we'll be glad to get out of here, especially the dog. Uh, we don't have a yard here because it's a townhouse. So I have to walk him every time he has to go to the bathroom. So he loves it because he gets to go for like nine walks a day. But um, uh, we have a nice big yard, fenced in. So dog's going to love it. And uh, so we've been uh, without a yard for a good couple of months here. So we're really looking forward to getting back to that. So that's the big news for the channel. Um, we'll do some videos. As soon as we get into the house, I'll do some videos about the house, show you all what's going on. What kind of dog I have a Brittany? Actually, I'm surprised he's not in here. So usually he... Usually when I'm on the computer, he likes to kind of nestle up over here. He's kind of tired tonight, though. So probably ate something that doesn't agree with him. Oh, fart head. Um, God, that dog just eats everything. Um, great bird hunters. That's what he is, upland bird hunter. Um, yep, he's a pheasant hunting machine. Man. A lot of grouse up here, though. This is not really pheasant country up here. This is more grouse country. Um He's mostly been on pheasant, a little bit of grouse. So um, be interesting uh, this season coming at the end of the year to see how he does full time on grouse. So um, really good. It's a really good dog. Uh, Brittany's super smart, natural hunters. They don't need a lot of training. They know what to do. Like it's their, it's the reason why they're on this planet is to hunt birds. And all you got to do is give them an outlet, give them basic obedience training, give them a little bit of field work training. And man, you got yourself a solid bird dog. They are great. Um, cannot recommend them enough. So a little on the small side, uh, they're the smallest of the upland bird dogs. They're a medium sized dog, about 40, 45 pounds. Um, but if you're considering a bird dog, like your Brittany's, Vishla's, uh, German short hair pointers, uh, wire hair griffins, any of those upland bird dogs. Um, yeah, Brittany, uh, Brittany's are typically the smaller of, of that line, but, uh, um, they are built like tanks. They can, they can take it all a little bit better in uh heavy brush than some of the bigger dogs too. They are, they are little, uh, motorcycles in the field, man. They just really cruise. So he's fun. Um, and great great pets too they was just awesome family dogs so um so he's gonna really love having a yard again nice big yard so for him to do his duties so <laughs> we actually were going to move into the country it's, it's funny you bring that up joseph um if you look back on the um um uh, video I did probably about a year ago or so. Um, we've been, uh, I've been talking about this move up here to Minnesota for the better part of about two years. Um, it was something that we, uh, were planning, um, something that we were wanted to do. We wanted to move up here to the twin cities or excuse me, move up here to Minnesota. I keep saying the twin cities for some reason, uh, move up here to, to Minnesota and uh, we actually had um, a rural property uh, and a house picked out. Um, and we uh, were going to be moving to a more rural area. Our plan initially was we were going to come up here, uh, find jobs, um, you know, kind of work up here for a few months and then make the transition out to the property that we had uh, in mind that we kind of already had picked out and everything. Um, but when we got up here, um, my wife's family is from the area. Um, we have a lot of friends and stuff from the area cause I went to college here in Minnesota and that's where I met my wife. My wife is originally from Minnesota. Most of her family is here. 
we had so many friends and family in the area and it's just such a great area. You know, we thought, Oh, you know, we don't want to live close to the city. We want to live out in the country. We got up here and the vibe is so cool. Um, it's such a laid back place. You turn a corner and you're just, you know, it's like you can be in the middle of a huge busy area, take a left turn and you're in this quiet secluded little neighborhood that, you know, the vibe changes like that. And uh, the other thing was we got up here and we were thinking, oh, we'll get jobs for a few months, you know, just kind of keep us, we, we've been saving for years to make this move. So we weren't really um, had anything to worry about financially, but we thought we'll just get some jobs for a few months and kind of work. Um, my wife and I were both able to land awesome jobs. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, it was absolutely crazy. Um, I got a job uh, in the bicycle business. I've been working for those of you that follow the channel the hat and shirt should give it away. But um, for those of you that follow the channel know that I've been working in the bicycle industry for most of my life. And I uh, used to own a bike shop, owned a bike shop for about 15 years, um, sold that, um, continued to um, continue to work in the bicycle industry. Even after that, I got up here and uh, Minnesota is a great hub for cycling and uh, got a job at uh, a, a company and awesome. They loved the fact that I had this huge experience in the cycling industry, landed this dream job. And I absolutely love it. Um, love going to work every day. Um, really, really appreciate uh, the company and what they're doing. And it's a really great opportunity. It's a growing company. Uh, really had, uh, really had a, a lot of uh, a luck finding a really great job up here and just kind of fell into it too. It was kind of weird. My wife also came up here. My wife works in the medical industry and she came up here and uh found out that there was a huge demand for what she does huge um and she found this awesome job pays twice as much as what she was making back in wisconsin and we would be absolute idiots if we walked away from these jobs uh we, we both love our jobs um you know we kind of we got up here and we kind of reassessed and we we're just like you know we're close to our family. We got so many friends in the area. We're having a blast. We love the area. We got these great jobs that we don't want to leave now. Let's, let's buy a home here and settle down. So, so it's, uh, it wasn't what we planned on. Um, it, uh, we definitely kind of did a 180. Once we got up here, we didn't expect to fall in love with the area as much. We wanted to get out in the country, you know, away from everything. And, uh, once we got up here, it's like, you know, there's so much cool things going on here. Such a great vibe. We just didn't want to leave it. So we don't live in the Twin Cities. We don't live in a huge city. Um, we live out a little ways, um, but we're definitely still within sort of the the area so that uh, it's not too, not too much of a uh, commute to our jobs and it's not too much of a, a pain in the butt to get into the cities if we need to for whatever reason. So. It's, it's such a great area. It really is. Um, it's like Portland, only not like stupid. <laughs> it's it's all the great things about uh, sort of the West Coast cities without, um, you know, without all the weird weirdness and weird people everywhere. It's still, it's still, uh, you know, it's still a bunch. This is Viking country up here, man. It's a bunch of bearded men and hardy women and, <laughs> you know, pickup trucks and gun racks and, uh, fishing and hunting. And, and this, that, that vibe is, is alive and well up here. You know, it's the North woods. Um, you ain't going to get away from that, but, um, you know, it's that whole backdrop to a really cool hip up and coming city in Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's just this weird fusion that just makes people like, like us just feel at home. It's like, it's like a, it's like a hip place for us. You know, it's a hip place for people with pickup trucks and gun racks. <laughs> so just like any city, it's a little, it's got, it's uh it's got its weirdness, but you can't, uh, can't argue with that. We have that, uh, um, I, I don't follow politics really a, a lot and I, and I don't want to get into a political discussion, but, um, we do kind of, we are kind of on the map right now because, um, that, um, 
Muslim uh, congresswoman that uh, got in the hot seat for making anti-Semitic comments uh, a couple months ago. I forget her name. Um, I, I don't. Uh, she's a Somali Muslim. Um, I don't remember her name. Uh, young woman. Um, she's a representative from the Twin Cities, from Minneapolis. Um, so uh, she uh, represents kind of the north northwest corner of Minneapolis, uh, which is very heavily uh, Somali. Actually, um, Minnesota has the largest Somali Muslim population in the United States. A lot of people don't know that. We also have the largest Hmong population in the United States. A lot of people don't know that either. <laughs> so it's weird. So, um, but uh, it's a very diverse culture up here. It's a real melting pot. So, um, but yeah, we got, uh, Hmongs are great people. They are. I, I, they are, uh, they love to hunt, dude. I got some stories about that. We were mountain biking one year, <laughs> this a couple of years ago, we were mountain biking on some trails and, uh, it was during, uh, uh, was it deer season or duck season? I don't remember. It was a couple of years ago now. And, uh, we were mountain biking down the trail and we just happened upon on a mountain bike trail, not a hiking trail, not a walking trail, a mountain bike trail happened upon a group of like five monks all with rifles walking down the, the, the path the wrong way, almost careened right into them. Um, so yeah, they love to hunt. They love to hunt. They love to fish. Um, they're uh, very family oriented, uh, very patriotic. Uh, very, they love being here. They love the country. They love the people. So um, they, uh, they are definitely uh they're definitely great people. So, um, got to know a lot of them when we, when I went to college up here and, uh, so they're, uh, they're good people. So yeah, absolutely. And the, yeah, I've gotten to know a lot of, uh, the Somali population up here too. And it's, they're, they're great people too. I don't think they're really well re represented by their political contingency, but, uh, they're very family oriented. Um, they're very happy to be here and, uh, um, they do good things. So they take care of their neighborhoods, which is good. So, very cool. I'll stop talking about the political stuff now. I, again, I don't follow it that well, so I'm the, the stupid when it comes to politics. I'm not the kind of the person to talk to about that stuff. I just know what I see. I know who I talk to. So, um, so yeah, there you go. Tack pack. Um, 115 bucks for 50 bucks. Can't argue with that new house coming up. I'll do some videos of the new house when we move in. Um, it's going to need some updates. It says carpeting in the kitchen. I have never seen a house with carpeting in the kitchen. Ugh, it's so bad. <laughs> so, um, it also has a two fireplaces, one in the, um, main floor and then one in the basement. It's really popular around here, especially for older homes to have fireplaces in the basement which is weird. I've never seen that before. And I lived in Wisconsin. It's not like I lived all that far away. So but yeah, it's not uncommon around here. If you buy a house in the, um, uh, built in the sixties, maybe seventies at the latest, you're going to have a fireplace in your basement. <laughs> so it's, it's weird. <laughs> so we have two fireplaces, um, which is cool, but, uh, yeah, it's very old school. So, it's uh and and carpeting in the kitchen oh it's a terrible too it's in horrible shape um the kitchen has not been updated since like mid 70s it's terrible <laughs> so but that just means we get to gut it out and make it our own which will be a lot of fun so that's pretty much all i have where are we We're about 45 minutes in that's good i kind of wanted to go about an hour tonight Hey, I've never been in a place, like I said, I've never seen um, wallpaper kitchen. Yes, there's wallpaper in the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> wallpaper and carpeting. Um, never been in a house with a fireplace in the basement. No experience with that whatsoever. But then when we moved up here, um, probably half of the houses that we looked at that were built before the early 70s had fireplaces in the basement. So as well as upstairs. So it'd be interesting to see. So we love having a fireplace. I think that's an important thing of any house you should have a fireplace, but, um, uh, 
that it's a it's a weird fireplace too. Like the one up on the main floor is like a normal fireplace that you would see in a house, wood burning fireplace. The one down in the um, basement um, looks it almost looks like an old chart, like an old coal burning like fireplace but it isn't this house is not that old i think it was 68 69 this thing was built um but it's definitely a fireplace that's not meant to look nice it's just a fireplace meant to heat so it's it's, design is different um and uh it's uh not as sort of pretty and ornate as the one that's upstairs not that it's really ornate but it's not really a great fireplace to look at it's just meant to shuttle out heat that's all it's meant for so be interested to to use that we actually we actually got saved by our fireplace the house that we had in wisconsin um so this would have been two houses ago um we had um our furnace go out in the middle of the coldest week of the winter it was the worst time for a furnace to go out. And in that house, we, it was an older house and we had um, a boiler. So it's not like you can just call up Bob's heating and have him come out and fix your furnace. We had this old school boiler and most people didn't even want to touch it. And uh, we had a contractor come out and say, Okay, well, this is what you need to fix it. We don't have these parts because we don't deal with that. But if you get the parts, we'll fix the, the boiler. And um, so I ordered the parts online and shipped them in and got them. And they came out and fixed it up. And it ran like a charm after that. But uh, we had about a week where we were waiting for the parts and we didn't have any heat in the house. And uh, that fireplace was our saving grace that kept us warm for bitter cold Wisconsin winter for a week. We weren't comfortable, but we were warm enough to, to get through it. So it's always a, it's always a good idea to have a wood burning fireplace as a backup for those kinds of things. So it's uh it's also a good idea not to buy a house with a old boiler in it. <laughs> I learned that lesson the hard way. Actually, the thing worked like a charm. It really did. I liked it, but uh, you know, it was old. It needed to be fixed up, and it just happens. I fixed it up the right way, though. I guarantee that thing will not break down again for another twenty years. And we we fixed the shit out of that boiler. So. And, and weirdly enough, it was pretty easy to find the parts. It's just nobody had them locally. So the nice thing about the boiler, too, is it doesn't dry out the air in the house like a uh, forced air heating system does. Um, your house doesn't get, like, super dry in the winter. It's nice. And it also, you don't you don't have the, the noise of, you know, the, the air system. It's just this nice radiant heating and it's just there and it it's um i i loved having the heating system the whole basement floor was heated so we had pipes running in the basement concrete pad that kept the basement floor uh nice and warm so that was nice so yeah if you watch videos basically from about the beginning of my channel to about two years ago um, all those videos were that house. So yeah, we didn't need a dehumidifier at all. Nope. So the basement stayed nice and warm and you know, it, it burnt off any moisture that was, that was down there. Cats loved it in the winter time and they go down in that basement and just sleep on that floor all day long. <laughs> they love that. They knew where the pipes were too. Like they would lay in certain spots in the basement. They knew exactly where those pipes laid. So it was funny. Probably going to need to dehumidify in the next house though. So that's just an old fashioned forced air. Wood stove. I've always wanted a house with a wood stove. There's not too many insurance companies that will cover you if you have a wood stove, though. Um, even 
Uh, they'll grandfather it if you already have one. But um, that's always one of those things on their list. Like, do you have a trampoline? You know, do you have a certain kind of dog? <laughs> you know, do you have a wood burning stove? That's always one of those things that they want to know ahead of time if you have. So, um, yeah, it's it's hard to get. Uh, my my parents actually had a wood burning stove. They uh, they had a house that was built in the late fifties or so, and they had a wood burning stove. And uh, their insurance company actually made them get rid of it. They like made them get rid of it. Like they had to like get it out of their house and cap it, cap the flu off and everything. And and then they had to have it inspected and approved. So. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'd love to have a wood burning stove. So if I could fly it under the radar. <laughs> Yeah, pool too. Yeah. Pools aren't as hard as they I I it, pools aren't as hard as they used to be. You, you, pools are one of those things that they'll up your your price quite a bit if you have a pool or a trampoline. Um a wood burning stove is one of those things that some insurance companies won't insure you if you have a wood burning stove. And that's not an uncommon thing up here, you know. A lot of people have wood burning stoves. Trick is to have them grandfathered in, though. Um, pellet stoves are another one. Not not too many people like pellet stoves or pellet furnaces. Those are problematic with insurance companies too. Which I don't know. I've never. I have no experience with pellet stuff. So, um, I did have a. Uh, a uh, a friend of mine actually doesn't live too far from here. They're out a little ways and they don't have natural gas. They don't have access to it. So um, they have a, a, um, a wood burning furnace. It's a boiler, but it's wood burning. Um, so the, the wood burning furnace with the water is outside. And they basically have to keep a fire going in the furnace all winter long. And then that, of course, cycles warm water, hot water into the house. So they use it as their hot water heater and also to heat their house. So um, it's a really cool idea. The problem is um, you can't go anywhere. Like if you, you can't go on vacation, like you can't leave your house for very long. You have to keep that fire going constantly. Um, if you want to like go away for a week or something like that in the middle of winter, you have to have somebody come to your house and throw wood in the furnace. Cause if it, if the fire goes out, the water freezes. So, so <laughs> that's a huge problem. You wreck the whole system if that happens. So they can't get propane out there. I don't, I think they probably could. I think probably, I don't know what the cost benefit analysis was on that, but they decided to go with the wood burning system. I have friends that, um, I have friends that live out in California, they have, or California, Colorado, and they have the same system too. I, I can't imagine keeping up on that. <laughs> it's a lot of wood. They go through a lot of wood. Um, the other problem is, too, it's kind of hard to regulate the heat. Like, you can't just have a roaring fire going in there all the time. You'll bake yourself out of your own house. Um, so it's got to be like this, like, smoldering fire. <laughs> like, you can't just, like, throw a bunch of wood in there. And nor would you want to. You don't want to burn it up too fast either. Um, but it's kind of always on the verge of going out. <laughs> so... Yeah, it wasn't that it wasn't like it was just outside the garage. It wasn't like, you know, a big trip to go outside and throw a couple of logs in there. But yeah, not my gig. I wouldn't know if I'd want to do that. Uh, I got friends that live way, way up north of Minnesota, way, 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 like almost to Canada and just outside of the boundary waters. And um, 
they heat their house uh, with a wood burning uh, heater inside the house. So it's a, it looks like a, it looks like a kind of like a big wood burning stove, kind of what it looks like. Um, but um, there are, uh, they keep that fire going pretty much all winter long. And then there are fans in it that kind of push the air all over the house. It works pretty well. Originally that house was like a hunting, uh, I don't want to say a hunting shack, but it was just a hunting lodge for the, for the family. And so they would only run it while they were there, you know? And, uh, but when he eventually bought out the rest of the family and moved in there full time. So he lives there. So he's got to keep this thing going all winter long. <laughs> yeah, that would suck. That was like walking the dog. When we had that polar vortex in January, shortly after I got up here, when it was like 30, 40 below zero, the dog doesn't know what the temperature is outside. <laughs> he wakes up at three o'clock in the morning and wants to go, has to go to the bathroom. And you got to bundle up and take him out for, for a tinkle. Oh, that sucked. I hate the winters. I don't mind winter, but I hate that doing that, having to walk the dog in the middle of the night. That's why we're looking forward to getting the yard again. So it's been a rough couple of months. <laughs> so, but we knew that going into it. Man. We knew what we we knew what we had to do. It was only temporary. Stay in the south. Yeah, this is Viking country up here, man. There, I don't. I've, I've said this many times. I don't know what draws us to this. I really don't. I don't understand it. Um, my family is mostly Scandinavian. Um, my um, my grandparents on my father's side are first generation Scandinavian, first generation American from Scandinavia. Both of them migrated here from Scandinavia. Um little bit of German, but mostly Scandinavian. And, um, you know, why did we populate Iceland? Why did we migrate to Wisconsin and Minnesota? You know, why, why are we drawn to this weather? I don't know, <laughs> you know, but this is where we, this is where we like to be. So it's Viking country up here, man. I don't know why we do it. So, but we do, you put us down South and we hate it. <laughs> it's like, it's too hot. You know, can't sleep in that weather. Ugh. Yeah. A lot of hairy people there, eh, you know? Yeah. We're not that hairy. Scandinavians hairy. Scandinavians aren't hairy. It's not like they're, it's not like they're bears. See, I think like hairy people, I think more of like, like out West, you know, like, like Colorado trappers and traders, that sort of thing. <laughs> Italians. Yeah, that too. Scandinavians. Nah, that's something we're not hairy people. Hundred and one degrees. See that no interest in that whatsoever. <laughs> No interest in that whatsoever. <laughs> I worked nights for a while too. Getting off at three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning sometimes. Especially in the winter, that kind of sucked too. You know, they say you never get, I worked third shift for about two and a half years and they say you never get used to it. And uh, you don't, you never get used to that. 
body is just not built for that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it just, it, it, it wears you down. You know, I did that for two and a half years and I never cared to do that again. It's good money working third shift, but, um, uh, yeah, it just, it wears you down. It ages you quick. So I was happy when I got out of third shift. That was a good, good career move. Went back to the bicycle business where things make sense. <laughs> For me, at least. So we're mo we're just about an hour here. So we're 1230. Yep, we're about an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for the night. We think we've talked about everything we've needed to talk about tonight. Um, for those of you that are watching this uh, afterwards, which most people will, <laughs> uh, didn't weren't able to make it tonight. Um, don't fret. We're going to do a lot more live uh, streams in the near future. Uh, once we get into the new house, get everything set up, I plan on making uh, live streams a more uh, a, a, a more focus of the channel, and uh, also making sure that we put out a lot of uh, forewarning for them. And oh, Christopher, how's it going, dude? Sorry, man, we're just about to wrap it up, but I'm glad you made it, dude. <laughs> so it's good to see you, man. At the end, but you made it, yeah. So I appreciate it, man. Love seeing you here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, know Christopher was our um, big uh, holiday giveaway winner uh, two years ago. So he won our big holiday giveaway. Uh, not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before. So, so he's been around a while. Everyone say hi to Christopher. Glad you made it. <laughs> Love the live stream. Yeah, people people love the live stream. People always, every time I do live streams, people always, I always get a bunch of emails afterwards going, man, I didn't know about it. I didn't get an email. You didn't have enough warning beforehand. So yeah, we'll definitely, um, when will this be rebroadcast? As soon as we shut down the live stream, it will go live on the channel, or it will go on the channel. So you'll be able to go back and watch the whole thing. Um, so uh, like any other video on the channel. So you can go ahead and watch it. So, and that's you know, a lot of people will watch it over the next couple of days, I assume. So they're always popular, but uh, we'll definitely give uh, some more forewarning. Uh, eventually I'd like to have live stream be more of a scheduled thing that we do on a more regular basis, but we're going to have to wait till we get into the new house. So uh, get everything set up. I'm really excited. We're going to build some workbenches. We're going to do some remodeling. We're going to do, uh, we're going to, we're going to, outfit a nice man cave got some great ideas um so it's gonna be a lot of fun so i'm definitely looking forward to it so uh on that note we'll go ahead and wrap it up for tonight thanks all for showing up appreciate it remember tack pack check them out at tackpack.com uh 115 june tack pack get on that you got a couple days left use the promo code dynamic prepper pack and you'll receive the sog reactor multi-tool as your free gift and uh, uh, moving into uh, next month in June, we're going to be closing on the new house in early June. We're going to be making our move in uh, uh, mid to late June. So I uh, expect some videos uh, to be rolling out about that, too. We'll go ahead and uh, get a new man cave set up and a new place to film videos, and then we'll be off and running. So uh, hopefully they won't see too much interruption uh, in video production and flow as we move into June. Uh, but after that, um, expect big things out of the channel for 2019 because we got um, a lot of great trips set up for you know, camping, hunting, all that sort of stuff. Got some fishing trips set up uh, for later in the season. Plus we have the new house and all everything that's going to be going on there. Uh, so uh, lots of projects that we're going to be doing. So um, uh, just nothing, nothing but good stuff. So it's all fun stuff. So thanks all for showing up tonight. I appreciate it. Take it easy, everyone. Have a good one.